This video was sponsored by Backblaze. Here we have a cart and an inverted pendulum attached. Assume there's no friction or air resistance that will affect the pendulum's rotation. And we'll say the pendulum can only assume angles between 0 and 180 degrees inclusive. At those endpoints though, the pendulum will hit the cart and just rest there, but it can swing through everything in between. Now let's say someone is going to move the cart from some point A to another point B. The cart can only move one dimensionally, so left and right, but the journey can be as chaotic or as simple as we like. It just has to be motion you could physically make happen. So the cart could get up to speed then coast the entire time, it could accelerate the entire time, or it could even move backwards at some point then forwards again. Or it could do this. The motion can be complicated, but the cart will start at rest at point A and it will end at point B. And no, it does not need to end at rest. Now the question is, if somebody told you exactly what the equation of motion would be for the cart and we fixed that, is it definitely possible to choose some starting angle for the pendulum such that when the cart gets to point B, the pendulum is still in the air? as in the final angle is not 0 or 180 degrees, it's something in between. Now, we will assume that if the pendulum hits the cart during its journey, or the angle reaches 0 or 180 degrees, then it just stays there. It cannot bounce, it cannot be lifted back up from the ground due to the motion of the cart. Once it hits the ground, it's done. So what we're really asking is, given any motion that starts at point A and ends at point B, can we set the pendulum starting angle such that it always stays in the air, like this? We don't even need to know the initial angle, just does one exist? Clearly it does for certain motions, but for others, not too obvious. Now, this is where I first saw this problem. First and only time I've seen this problem. It was the book What is Mathematics? Good book, technical book. Not a textbook, but not a quick read either. And was recommended to me by a subscriber. If you want to check it out, I'll put a link below. But I really like this question, this puzzle, here it is here, uh, for multiple reasons. One of which I can't mention until the end. But another one of those reasons is that it seems like a physics problem. And it kind of is. But we're going to treat this as a math problem. We can actually analyze a lot about this by just using pretty basic math. And in fact, treating this as a physics problem would not be that fun. You'd have Lagrangian mechanics and differential equations, and we're not going to do any of that, not even F equals MA. We're just going to treat this mostly from the point of view of mathematics. We know that if our initial angle is zero degrees, then that'll also be the final angle, regardless of motion, since the pendulum can't be lifted up from there. This also means if we start at 180 degrees, then we'll end at the same thing. So we can graph this initial angle versus final angle, and no matter what x of t is, we at least know if you start at 0 degrees, you end there, and if you start at 180, you end there. Now some of you may notice this is starting to look like an intermediate value theorem type question. We don't know what all these other angles will lead to since the motion is some generic x of t, but at these smaller angles, like maybe if you start at 15 degrees, Unless there's high acceleration to begin, good chance the pendulum will just fall to zero before it gets to the end, thus theta final is zero. Doesn't have to be the case, but I'm just choosing values. And if the initial angle is close to 180 degrees, probably would see the same thing. Pendulum just drops and we finish at 180. But in order for our curve, which is definitely a function, to get from that y coordinate of zero to 180, it's got to move through all the y coordinates in between, right? Which means whatever the curve looks like, there's guaranteed some initial angle where the final angle is something between 0 and 180 degrees. Thus, the pendulum stays in the air during its entire journey. So no matter what the motion looks like or how far apart points A and B are, you can always select an initial angle that accomplishes what we want. In fact, this means you could give me any final angle between 0 and 180, like 90 degrees, and I know there must be at least one starting angle that will achieve that final state we want. Now, there is one more important question we have to ask though. What was wrong with that entire explanation? That's why I made this video. 
I would not have made this if that was the full answer because that wouldn't be too exciting. However, that is the solution they give in this book. The thing is though, this was written in the 1940s. And it wasn't until a few decades later that someone came along and found an issue with the argument they gave. And whoever revised this book didn't change that in the book, but at the end, they said that was arguably the only mistake the authors made, uh, was this problem. And he gives a reason why. But it's subtle, and it still really only has to do with math. Now, the explanation we just saw seemed fine. The only issue is that the intermediate value theorem, or a function going through all the y values in between two given coordinates, is only true if that function is continuous. So the real question is, is the output angle, the final angle, a continuous function of the initial angle? And to be fair, the authors did say, assume that's the case. The question we're trying to answer though is what's wrong with that assumption? Remember, something being continuous just means in general there's no sudden jumps in the output. And that's the case with most mechanical systems. I mean, if you simply run from point A to point B, your position as a function of time is continuous because you can't teleport. You can't just jump to a new position. So when dealing with a swing pendulum, it seems like that would be the case, right? If we start at one of the extremes, zero or 180, and we move to point B, it'll end at that same value. Start the other, boundary, same thing. So it seems like if we start slowly lifting, that we'll get to a point where it ends somewhere in the middle. I mean, it doesn't seem like, you know, if, th if this starting angle still we get land on the ground and we lift a little higher and it still lands on the ground, it doesn't seem like, oh, but a little more and all of a sudden we'll swing over to the other boundary and never land somewhere in the air or never finish somewhere in the air. It seems like lifting it just a little more will make it, you know, maybe fall but not as fast and it will, st and it will land in the air once it gets to point B which means we have a solution. There is some starting angle where it lands in the air. So if this is continuous and it seems continuous, then this problem's pretty easy. The reason we have to question that continuity can be more easily seen when you remove the restrictions. Allow the pendulum to swing all the way around as much as, much as it wants. Now I don't have a pendulum, but I have a double pendulum, which is a great physics and fidget toy if you're someone like me who's very fidgety. Um, but what we're going to do is now allow the, the cart and the pendulum to move from point A to point B, whatever the exit T may be, but we're going to allow it to swing all the way around. Okay? And what we're going to do is track or graph that angle, that angle with the positive x-axis, uh, against time now. We'll say it takes 12 seconds to go from point A to point B, so time will be the x-axis, and then the y-axis will be the angle, which theoretically can assume any value. We'll start between 0 and 180 degrees like before, but without any restrictions, the pendulum could swing around multiple times. Now, if we have a starting angle of just over 100 degrees, let's say, then the curve representing the angle over time could look something like this. It's a smooth curve, it finishes at t equals 12, and it has a final angle in this case of negative 50 something degrees. Then if we change the initial angle just a little, using the same x of t that will take 12 seconds, we'd get a curve that is slightly different. And note that these curves change continuously with the initial angle. So by changing that starting angle just a bit, the associated curve won't jump to something else that looks completely different. Then if we decrease the initial angle a little more, this could be another curve. But now look at what happens when we do include restrictions when we only allow the angle of the pendulum to assume values between 0 and 180 degrees inclusive. So far, all these curves hit that top boundary of 180 degrees. And like we said, the restricted pendulum must stay there for the rest of the trip. It can't bounce back up or whatever. So the final angle for all of these starting angles is actually 180 degrees. And I'll just put a dot there. Still no issues though. Now let's change the initial angle again and look at this curve. This also hits 180 degrees, but barely. So this also leads to a final angle of 180. However, when we change the initial angle slightly more, it's possible we get something that never touches the top boundary. Thus, the pendulum is freely rotating in the air until it gets to this point, the other boundary. 
Since it hits zero degrees, it must stay there. Thus the final angle is zero degrees, and we found our issue. The final angle jumped from 180 degrees to zero without moving through any of the numbers in between, meaning we found a discontinuity and the explanation we saw before isn't actually valid. So, unfortunately, the much less satisfying answer to this question is it really depends. It's absolutely possible to have the pendulum never hit the boundaries and look something like this. But now we know that final angle is not necessarily a continuous function of the initial one. And it's entirely possible for the output angle to jump over from one boundary to the other, depending on what these curves for the unrestricted pendulum look like. And although the answer may not be as clean as we'd want, I really like this problem since it shows that something like continuity, which can be really dry when we first learn it, can sneak its way into real world problems in ways you wouldn't expect. And before we end this, I want to thank Backblaze for sponsoring this video. Backblaze is a cloud backup and storage platform that allows you to store just about anything you would need for your personal or professional life. Whether you're the student who wants to save their projects, lab reports, and online notes, or you're the hobbyist who wants to back up their personal photos and videos, or even if you have a business, Backblaze will give you peace of mind knowing everything is stored securely. This way you won't have to worry about losing personal storage devices like a laptop or USB, and you can restore your files directly from the web or by mail. For unlimited personal storage, pricing comes out to just $6 per month for Mac or PC, and by signing up by going to backblaze.com slash Zachstar, or by clicking the link below, you'll get a 15-day free trial where you can try uploading and downloading files to see how everything works before you commit. So no risk in just giving it a try. Again, link is below, and with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon, social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.